What's the saddest thing to hear it's okay, I'm used to it, as a response to. Had a friend who was really lonely and his old friends were awful to him. Like there was one girl who would just hit him and stuff and emotionally abuse him really bad but he didn't have any other friends so he just stuck with it. Accidentally hit him lightly or something when he said it's okay. I'm used to it, and I felt so bad for the poor guy. He's fine now though. Been there done that. Sometimes I used to miss the abuse. At least someone wanted to spend time with me. My son talking about how his mother, my ex-wife talks to him. During our marriage she would take everything out on me, whether it was my fault or not. Too busy at work shout at me. Her family coming to visit shout at me. Now we are apart. She does the same thing to him. He moves between both houses by his own choice. Last week she told him you might as well leave. As you would imagine he was very upset. When he got to my place he was making excuses for her and actually said it's okay. I'm used to it. I have never spoken badly about his mother to any of my children until now. I have been talking him since then that she used to do this to me and that it's actually not okay. He has spent a lot of time considering what I have been saying. He is 20 and has said he is going to have a discussion with her about it. I hope she acts like as much of an adult as he is but I don't like the chances of that. When I'd go to my friend's house, and their parents would just belittle them and make them visibly upset. Heartbreaker, man. I give this answer quite often when people find out that I'm in constant pain. It's a lie, of course. You never get used to pain. As someone with a chronic condition I feel this crap right here. When a kid is left waiting for their parents. My dad left me at the airport for 6 hours. When I came home for Christmas from the Air Force, every other military guy had family waiting for them at baggage claim. Never wasted money flying home again. Like the one time a girl ever asked me out in my life, back in high school, I told her sorry, I just met another girl I really like and we're starting to get serious, so I can't right now. And her answer was that, it's okay, I'm used to it, no one ever picks me first, it was something like that. I felt freaking terrible cause usually, back then, that would have been my line. Preface, my boyfriend has lost his mom, both of his uncles, and his step grandfather, all separate instances. Literally last Sunday night at midnight my boyfriend woke me up to tell me that one of his really good friends from high school died. He was so upset and I was so sad for him. I told him how sorry I was for him because I honestly didn't even know what to say. His response? It's okay. I'm used to it, in the saddest tone I've ever heard. I started crying. How freaking heartbreaking. When you're volunteering at the homeless shelter, and they have to turn someone out on a cold winter night because the facility is maxed out, the person, with tears, says, it's okay, I'm used to it. I had a roommate after college that unfortunately slipped back into a pill problem. I came back to the apartment one evening with my mom to find my roommate passed out on the floor and incoherent. I was freaking out the entire time but my mom was incredibly calm and knew exactly what to do. Afterwards she told me, I used to have to do that all the time with my dad. My mom grew up with an alcoholic father who ended up dying of his disease so she had been through a lot. But I really had no idea how bad it had been for her until then. I still get a little choked up thinking about her face in that moment. This won't be a very popular opinion unless you've really been through it, but when people constantly interrupt you, especially when it's by people that you love, it's one thing when it's a lively and interesting conversation, then I get it, but even in just normal everyday communication, after asking so many people to stop with no avail, it gets to the point where you know nobody is really listening or cares what you have to say. I'm almost just tired of talking, but it's okay, I'm used to it. This is the one thing that still rattles me to the core. Even worse is the fact I'll cut in on someone to try to show I'm actively listening but really it's just the same thing I can't stand. I'm the sad sack in this story. My youngest brother passed away a little over a year ago. At the funeral, my aunt was introducing me to people and most responses were, Oh hi wow I didn't even know he had a sister. After about an hour of this, I was introduced to my dad's pastor and he said, Oh wow I had no idea Lex had a sister. And I said, yeah it's okay I'm used to it. And he says, 
Oh wow that's so sad. Like thanks a frick ton people. Sweet Jesus man. I'm sorry for what humanity did to you. When I was in 10th grade there was this freshman girl who had a pretty nice body in my photography class. Sometimes when she walked by the back table like 3 or 4 of the guys there would slap her butt and she would just keep walking solemnly. One day I took her aside so no one was in earshot and asked her why she just lets them do that to her. And she said it's fine. I've had to deal with it since I was in middle school from some of them. When my boss told me a few weeks ago that I haven't been getting enough quotes to him and maybe this sales job is tea for me, but you are a really nice guy, I could not tell you how many times I've had someone say something negative followed up with but you're a really nice guy. On the bright side, if many people say it, you probably are actually a really nice dude. Just keep being nice, hope it all works out. Not quite it's okay I'm used to it but pretty close. I'll listen to a friend of mine who has ADHD and Asperger's talk about his DND stories and he'll go on for a bit and then suddenly stop and say sorry. I'm rambling and you just know he's been told to shut up or stop talking so many times that he's now used to having to stop talking because someone got frustrated with him rambling. Makes me sad that someone would tell this guy to shut up when he's clearly enjoying explaining his wild universes. Passion like that shouldn't be stifled. My friend apologizes every time he tells a story that drags on longer than the I should stop talking point. Even if people are enjoying it. We're always like dude. It's cool. We're listening. Keep going. Only for him to apologize a little later. It's kinda sad that his reaction to being excited about something is to apologize because he thinks nobody wants to hear it. Constantly having different utilities cut off and multiple eviction threats from the landlord and a large possibility of becoming homeless in the near future because whoever you live with would rather stock up on liquor than save for rent and bills. That seems almost too specific. I was walking into Walmart the other day when I saw a woman in her early 60s in a wheelchair trying to push herself uphill against the wind with a basket on her lap. I said to her pardon me, I don't mean to be rude but would you like a hand and she said oh no that's alright, I'm used to it. I felt so guilty for how much I take my legs for granted. What a trooper she was. She might have been more receptive if you had offered her legs instead of a hand. Someone hurling insults swears hurtful words at a person. This is basically what I say. Because I've had so many hurtful words thrown at me I'm practically immune to it by now. Yup, same here. On the bright side being able to say I've been called worse by better and it be 100% accurate is rather satisfying in strange sort of way. This kid I had an after school program was supposed to be picked up by his dad for the weekend. Talked basically all Friday who much fun they were gonna have. Well Monday came and I found out the dad never showed the kid seemed fine though and when I tried to get if he really was okay, he said it's okay, I should be used to this by now. Also another kid I babysit, her mom is supposed to call on Sunday nights but skips many of them and he just calls whenever she pleases really, and gets mad at the kid for not answering while in school. I asked her about it, and she said it doesn't bother her. Cause she's so used to her mom being flaky and not calling at the agreed upon time. My GF told me she still has back pain and aches from her father hitting her before. When I told her I'm worried and I'm sorry, she responds it's okay I'm used to it my heart god dang broke. I was just lost for words. Maybe you should look up some ways you can help her with the pain. Like physical pain. Judging by your reaction to that I can tell that you probably already help her with the emotional. My mom has some strong letting go issues. She had a crappy childhood. That resulted in her not letting me go to birthday parties, sleep over, play date ctc when I was younger cause she was afraid something was going to happen or that I would somehow embarrass myself for life. Around the third grade we had a new kid in class, and when it came around to birthday parties everyone but me got an invite. The new kid noticed this after a while and was offended for me. When asked why I wasn't upset just stated that I was used to it. Even if I had gotten an invite I would not be allowed to go. I hope that new kids became your friend. What a cool dude. 
8th grade teacher here. I have a student who recently told me that her mum cries every night as she goes through the week's budget trying to work out how much they can afford to eat that week. I asked her if she ever went hungry, because as her teacher it's my duty to escalate when a child isn't having basic needs met, and whether she wanted to see the school counselor about the crying. Her response to both questions was it's okay, I'm used to it. It was honestly the most heartbreaking thing I'd ever heard. Later on I found out that this girl only had half a buttered sandwich each day at school, which had to last her through recess and lunch, and always went to the library to read during breaks because she wanted to conserve her energy. All the teachers thought she was a bookworm. In actual fact she longed for friends, but hadn't made any because they were all running around in the playground. I had a girl in high school apologizing for hitting me with a metal stick a few months before the apology. The reflex answer was NVM I'm used to that. The look of shame on her face when I said that was some painful crap. My mom usually can't attend school events because she's working. When she tells me she can't attend something, that's my response. I used to nanny this really sweet girl, in kindergarten or the first grade the girl that sat next to her in class died in a freak accident. She had recently, within the year or so, just lost grandparents, animals, and a family friend. I asked her how she was handling the loss of her friend and she responded, I'm okay, I'm used to losing people close to me, broke my heart. I work at Toys R Us. The saddest thing is a child who knows they're not the favorite saying that when they get $1.10 toy and their sibling gets many toys, all of which are over that price. I was like oh, is it your brother's birthday to this little girl who was getting one little doll when her brother was getting nerf guns and video games. She looked at me and went mom and grandma buy him everything he wants. I'm used to it. A story for a similar phrase it's just easier to this way. Cousin was getting married, at her stepdad's ranch house, and invited everybody including her father and us. They had one of those through the years photo albums on the TV playing throughout the night. Despite the fact that her father raised her in a loving home till she was 16, there were absolutely no photos of her father anywhere in the video. Multiple people on both sides noticed. She was eventually confronted about it and said that it was put together by her mother and it wasn't worth arguing over. She then had her stepdad walk her down the aisle, in front of her father. Yikes. Nurses, doctors and healthcare workers getting the living snot kicked out of them by violent abusive people in the hospital, and the police doing absolutely bugger all about it. I did security in an emergency ward and I really was not prepared for how violent it was. Also I was not prepared for how little the police did. It was practically impossible to get them to show up and on the extremely rare occasions they did, they never arrested anyone. I remember the first day I was filling out an incident report where a nurse got knocked down flat. And I'm apologizing to her saying I had been on the phone and can't even get the police to show up. And she said that's okay, I'm used to it, and you better get used to it too. Wanting to hang out with someone and either they already have plans, or you later find out they did something fun with your group of friends and they didn't invite you. Now I'll usually say it's fine, go have fun glad you had fun, it's not really fine, I've just gotten used to it. I know that feeling all too well. Removed because I felt like I was crap talking my mom who I love very much, gist of it was, people ask how I go all day without complaining about being hungry. Friend, holy crap, I'm sorry, man, I don't know how it shot crap all over the house and on the walls, plumber, it's okay, I'm used to it, literally his job. I knew this girl for like 10 years because of girl scouts, but didn't become real good friends until high school. I'd never had like a sleepover with her outside of Girl Scouts activities. When I slept over, I could hear her dad screaming at her brothers for not cleaning up the game room and some other stuff, and then screaming at his wife, my Girl Scout leader, for whatever the boys did or didn't do. I was so scared and my friend just kinda ignored it. I was like, wow he sounds really upset. Are your brothers okay and she basically told me it was a normal occurrence in her house. I remember walking out to go to the bathroom and one of her brothers who likes to act like a tough butthole, was crying. Crying and cleaning the bathroom. I always had a weird feeling about her dad. Like he liked to act like the good, 
funny, suburban Christian dad when everyone was around, but even when I was young, I felt like he was really condescending. No one in that family deserved that sort of treatment from him. One of them brothers they had adopted a few years prior from China, and I felt like he was so unfortunate to have such a crappy dad and a brother who took things out on him because he felt like crap too. Anyways TL. DR. Saddest thing is when you learn your friends have one or two crappy parents who act like crap and they're so used to being screamed at all the time. For me the saddest moments are when they can still have a normal expression while saying it. If someone says I'm used to it while crying, it kinda means they're not really used to it. There was a kid in my class when I was around 8 years old that was really unpopular because he was poor and often got bullied. After a while he found his place. As the guy that does stupid crap and hurts himself to try and fit in. There was actually a toughness session but in reality it was just people beating the ever loving crap out of him while he just stood there without reacting. As well as him putting out cigarettes using his arms and hands. Even let people whip him with long thin branches while not reacting at all. Just so he could fit in and have friends. I remember the teacher finding out and getting so incredibly angry at everyone and started yelling at our entire class in the middle of the class. He straight up begged her to stop blaming people, as he had finally found what he called friends. Anyways, she told him to pull up his sleeves and there were bloody whip marks, bruises and burns all over his arms. The guy just looks at her with a smile and says that he's used to it and he's really happy. The teacher straights up starts to cry and pull him out of the classroom. Didn't see him for long after that as he got placed into a foster home and as it turns out, he actually was used to it cause he'd been beaten at home for as long as he could remember. And now that I'm older I realize just how heartbreaking it would be to see a tortured 8 year old boy act all happy because he managed to get fake friends by being beaten repeatedly. Nerve damage in my back. I've seen quite a few high level doctors about it. Just went to see the last one before I knew there was nothing else I could do and know that it would never heal and I would be stuck this way forever. It was the first appointment my parents actually went to with me, in mid 20s and don't live at home anymore. But I guess after a few years they were frustrated I had never gotten any help. After a few hours there and a nerve conduction study that lasted almost 3 hours. No change. Nothing they can do to help. My mom and dad were upset when the doctor, seeming genuinely sorry, said there was nothing they could do. Having seen lots of doctors before this who all responded the same way over the last two years I responded something like it's okay doctor. I figured that's what you'd say. Just wanted to get a final opinion, which sent my parents over the edge. I guess they expected something to happen or some magic surgery to exist. Not to be told by an expert sorry. Nothing we can do and for me to be so nonchalant about it. It sucks but I'm used to it. Working retail a guy going through my checkout with his severely autistic son who was probably in his 20s and bigger than his dad. The son starts beating on the dad. The dad really struggles to stop his son and takes a good few hits. I'm like are you okay man and he just looked at me. Dead behind the eyes yeah. I'm used to it. Poor guy man. My stepdaughter came home from her boyfriend's house complaining of a headache. When I asked a few more questions she finally told me he had hit her really hard in the back of the head. Had a big goose egg and scab. I was horrified and asked why she was even still with him after that. She just said it's okay. I'm used to it. Wish I could do something to help with her self esteem but no matter what I tell her or how much I care about her. She needs to figure out how to love herself. You're a good parent. When I was 15 or 16 my friends told this really really big girl that I liked her as a joke. It was crappy, but she believed them. I flagged her down after gym class to tell her truth, and when I did she goes, yeah, it's okay. People don't ever have feelings for me. I'm used to pranks like this. I remember punching my friend that did that in the chest like 6 or 7 times during study hall the next period. It was heartbreaking. I was dating this girl who had been through a string of crappy relationships. We were arguing one day and she tells me to just hit. She's yelling it, emotions are riding high. She says, it'll just make you feel better, so go ahead and slug me. I'm used to it. I told her I wouldn't because it wouldn't solve anything. I would only strike a significant other if that's what they're into. When I was 19 and dating my current partner, I was squatting in an abandoned 
flea infested, decaying house while I scrapped by on food stamps and working 8 hours a week because my job was cutting everyone. A friend offered to let me move in with them for a while, but didn't want me to bring my best friend and last member of my family, my cat. I tried to take him to an animal rescue place but the attendant decided my cat was too aggressive after he manhandled him pretty hard. As I sat in my partner's car and held my cat's crate close to my heart, he lamented to me how unfair this all was and how he knew my cat meant everything to me, and how our only option seemed to be to take him to the shelter that told me point blank that if I took my cat there, they would kill him. I looked at him, full of despair at the thought that I had failed my little buddy, who had been my constant companion through deaths and abandonment and homelessness, and honestly stated, it's okay, I'm used to it, to me, it was Tuesday, to him. He was witnessing the saddest thing he had ever seen happening to someone he was quickly falling in love with and he began to cry. I was so surprised by his reaction, because, why would anyone cry over me or my problems? The good news is my friend changed their mind and I got to keep him. And when I eventually moved in with my partner, he let me take him even though he's deathly allergic to cats and we found ways to work around it for a number of years until my cat eventually passed away due to natural causes. I miss my little buddy, my constant companion every day, but I'm so thankful I got the time with him that I did. I know many people hate on cats and say they're horrible, but that cat was everything to me, the adorable little rascal, and he loved me in a way that I believe few people in this world get to experience from an animal. The first time I injected chemo directly into a child's head they said this to me, crazy thing to hear and do, to get chemo directly into the spinal fluid in the brain. A special access port is sometimes installed under the skin and through the skull. The child is awake for the procedure typically. It's more or less painless. I'm that guy who always seems to be on the edge of friend groups, or at least I used to. I was that one who always got talked over by other people, or people wouldn't realize I was talking at all. I was just used to being that guy, the one who was just kind of there. Got to college and found a group of friends that I really do interact with and it's amazing how different that is. Your parents and family telling you shut up, stop talking, or I'm not interested. That was a good 90% of my childhood if I ever wanted to discuss anything I was interested in. My wife getting repeatedly stuck with a needle while the nurses struggle to find a vein. We've been to the a four times this week. She's battling Lyme disease and a pile of co-infections. Basically whenever nobody bothers to learn how to say someone's name properly, especially if it's unusual or exotic for the area, it's a basic unit of respect and acknowledging someone as a person. Learning to say their name correctly, I have a really unusual first and last name, and a lot of people who have known me for years co-workers, etc. still don't say it correctly, despite multiple corrections. So I'm super conscientious of making sure I pronounce other people's names correctly, even if they use phonemes that don't quite match up to English. Often the response I get is a very surprised and grateful no one ever tries, which is pretty similar to I'm used to it. Being bullied because you were raped and everyone in school chose the side of the rapist. Happened to my ex-girlfriend when she was 9 or 10 years old, so long before I ever met her. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.